so here the power rating it is given as 7.5 kilowatt the rpm it is 900 rpm and the pressure intensity it is 0. Point, uh, 0 0.07 newton per millimeter square these are the three entities the coefficient of friction it is 0. 0.25 of the clutch so by this we know that the power rating it is 7.5 kilowatt so it means 7.5 into 10 to the power 3 watts the rpm it is 900 rpm so by this we can calculate the value of omega it is 2 pi into n divided by 60 so it becomes 2 pi into 900 divided by 60 so it comes 94.26 radian per second so by this particular rpm we have found out the angular velocity that is 94.26 radian per second the intensity of pressure it is 0 0.07 newton per millimeter square and the value of coefficient of friction it is 0 0.25 so these are only the given entities so by which we have to move forward so first thing they are asked to find out the mean radius radius and face width face width of friction lining So main radius and the face width of the friction line. So let us consider let capital R be the mean radius and W it is the face width. width so both the entities so these are in millimeters we have to consider so therefore the ratio of ratio of mean radius radius to face width face width so the ratio of this r by w so this is given the ratio of radius to the face width as 4 so this is given is given as 4 so we know that We know that the friction area friction area of this frictional faces so we can find out this area is equal to this 2 pi into r so it is a circular ring so that's why 2 pi r and along the width so that's why it is a w this is the thing so once you know the area you can find out the normal axial force acting on frictional faces so therefore normal or axial force acting on 
friction phases. So therefore, the normal or the axial force we can find out it is in terms of this pressure in density into area. So we have calculated this area A. We know the pressure intensity. So therefore, the area 2 pi r into w into pressure intensity into pressure intensity. So therefore, now we can calculate the torque by considering the uniform wear theory. Okay. So therefore, considering considering uniform uniform wear so if I consider the uniform wear we know that torque is equal to n into mu into this load w into r so the n stands for the number of frictional surfaces here u is the coefficient of friction w it is the normal or the axial force and capital R it is the radius in radius so therefore n into mu n into mu is 2 pi r into w into p so this is w, this is the small w if I consider this is capital R so if you simplify you get n into mu in bracket this 2 pi r into r divided by 4 into pressure intensity p and again the outside bracket this particular r okay so this will be pi by 2 so this simplified version into n into mu into p into r cube so this we are written because the ratio they are given w is equal to r by 4 so that's why we have kept the value of this w that is in terms of r so here here the, as it is a single plate clutch single plate clutch the both the sides are active so therefore the number of active sides are two so here I can write it in this form two into pi by two into the value of mu is 0 0.25 into 0 0.07 into r cube so if you simplify I'll get this value as 0 0.055 r cube in terms of r cube we will get the torque this is the torque the unit it will be in terms of Newton millimeter so this we have got it by considering the uniform wear theory now we also know that we also know that we know that the power transmission that is in terms of torque into the angular velocity torque into the angular velocity so if torque into angular velocity so we know that the power it is actually given 7.5 into 10 to the power 3 so therefore the torque we can calculate and the angular velocity it is 94.26 94.26 so what will be the torque you have calculated here so let it be 1 what will be the torque we are getting here 
so here we are getting the another torque 79.56 10 to the power 3 this will be again in terms of Newton per kilometer so we have got the second equation equation number 2 and equation number 1 so from this equation we can calculate the value of r so from equation 1 and 2 so we'll get the value of r cube is equal to 79.56 into 10 to the power 3 divided by 0 0.055 is equal to 144 6.5 10 to the power 3 so it means the value of r i'll get 113 millimeter if you take the cube root you'll get the value of r it is 113 millimeter so therefore once I got the value of R, I can calculate the value of width is 113 divided by 4, so it is 28.25 millimeter. So I got the R also, and we have got the width also. Now the second part, the inner and outer VDI. VDI so let us consider let R1 and R2 the outer and inner VDI VDI Now see, since the width of this particular clutch plate is equal to the difference of the outer and inner radii, so we can write, we know that, so always this W is in terms of difference of these two radii, so this difference, so already we know, we have already found out. 28.25 millimeters so let it be equation number 3 so also from uniform theory we know that so if I consider the uniform also uniform where where it tends to it stands to the mean radius capital R it is in terms of R1 plus R2 divided by 2 so you can write that R1 plus R2 is equal to 2 times R is equal to 2 times 113 so 226 millimeters so again I'll get one equation so if I Consider these two equations. So by equation number 3 and 4 we can calculate the value of R1 and R2. This is a simultaneous equation. So from equation equation 3 and 4 if I solve the value of R1 I will get 127.125 millimeters. This and the value of out inner radius it is 98.875 millimeter that's all